everybody. Well, today we are going to be installing a safety switch by Rector Seal model SS2. And not too long ago, this system is in the in the basement. But not too long ago, a house in this little subdivision uh, had overflowed, and the drain pan it overflowed the drain pan and totally destroyed the ceiling in his bedroom that nobody ever uses and it probably went on for about a week or so before they found out what was going on so an email got sent around with all the pictures and my name got brought into it about I could help avoid that situation so I'm out in this subdivision putting a bunch of these in and um, I, I have offered to install these while I'm out doing the maintenances but people are like well I just don't see the value in doing it and blah 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 but once the email came along everybody then started seeing what the value of this little switch does and what it does is um, what it does is what I'm gonna do is if you'll come over here with the light this little secondary opening right here with the red with the red uh, cap um, it's a, it sets a little higher than what this main drain uh, sets. So if this main drain ever clogged up for any reason, <clears throat> water would come out of this one. And then what it would do, let me get this top off here. All right, what it would do is fill this little 90 up and this little float switch would turn power off to the system. So it, you may never, ever, ever need it. But if you do need it, then you have it. But if you don't have it and you need it, well then um, you just don't have it. And we're not only putting this in to protect your ceilings or your floors or anything like that. We're also putting it in because all your electronics, your circuit board and your blower motor and all that stuff is under there. So the less water or the less chance water is to get down there the better chance everything is going to have to continue to run because the electronics definitely do not like water and then so all I do is just take a little screwdriver and then uh, there's a little slot in there and all we do is I gotta find the slot you just unscrew it Just unscrew it like that and uh, this has a little glue bushing just like that it threads in some people use a male fitting to come out of here with a little short piece of pipe in case something ever happens you have to take it off but I just prefer just to use what they send um, and then that way the reason I do it is because the more length of pipe you have here the more chance you have to overflow the pan and um, this is just a short distance but if you did put a melt fitting here and you added a little short piece of pipe and then you have this there is that much more of a chance you overflow the drain pan and we're not I'm just I don't want the liability in other words to do it so so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna use the bushing that they sent and then uh We'll get some glue. We'll get some glue and glue the little bushing. All right. And then what I always do, get it out of here again that what I always do is I kind of I'm not going to put it in there where it's going straight up and down and push it in real good and I always tilt it a little bit or turn it to the side put it in where it's to the side and that way uh, I can finish kind of tightening that bushing up with the 90 itself Just like that and then 
these things are you can't beat them they're uh, uh they're code actually here to where if you they have to be installed now on every new install let me grab this uh they come stapled so you got to cut them loose so i've already done the upstairs here and this is just the uh this is a basement here now I could come around here like this and break it right there but that's kind of a mess as you see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the system where you can't see it And I didn't worry about turning power off because there is a door switch here. So the door switch turned the power off. <clears throat> now I have seen people when they wire these things up, they don't wire them up correctly and they make it to where everything's got to um, the float switch down at the bottom down here has got to open up. Uh, the condensate pump float switch has got to um, open up and then this thing here has got to open up. So um, this thing is it's really easy to do. And here's what it does is Power leaves the circuit board on red. Power leaves the circuit board on red. It leaves this red wire here. Comes down. Goes through the float switch. It leaves the float switch. Comes back. Comes back here. And then it leaves this little red wire. And as you see, I'm pushing up on the red wire. And it leaves the red wire. And then it goes into the condensate pump float switch. It leaves that float switch, goes through here, and then goes out to the outdoor unit. So, um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to break the red wire coming off the control board or coming back from the condensate pump. I mean the float switch down there. I'm going to grab a wire now. And we'll attach this wire back. So. So like I said, what I just did. The condens or the float switch in the pan. The wire leaves the red terminal on the circuit board. It comes back. It goes through the um, float switch there. Comes back, and um, it goes up. Goes into the secondary float switch up there. Leaves there. Comes back. Goes into the red wire going into the outdoor unit, and then it goes to the condensate pump leaves the condensate pump, comes back, goes outside. So everything's tied in together and now these people are triple protected. They shouldn't have to worry about a water leak at all. And that there is how to install a float switch on your air conditioner.